Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me today, and thanks for the intro. I wanted to talk about the pairing of Trino and Apache Superset and all of the advantages that this can offer you for all of your BI use cases. Both of these tools are capable of great things on their own and offer a ton of flexibility, but when you combine them, it unlocks a bunch of potential that I wanted to share with you. Um, to introduce myself a little bit, I'm Evan Rusakis. I'm a PMC member or Project Management Committee member on the Apache Superset project. And I'm also a developer advocate with Preset. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about Preset later. But what I want to get into today is showing you around Superset a little bit, a whirlwind tour. Uh, and then we'll talk about some of the Trino advantages that Superset users should be aware of and some of the Superset advantages that Trino users should be aware of. So first off, what is Apache Superset? Well, it's everything you'd want in a BI tool or business intelligence tool. But uh, let's look at a couple of highlights on slides real quick before we go poking around in it. Um, first off, it's got a collaborative SQL IDE that allows you to define things like dimensions and metrics and create data sets, uh, whether virtual or materialized. And then you can use our thin semantic layer to update those and kind of decorate them a little bit, if you will. We've got uh, a no-code exploration tool that lets you easily explore data no matter your skill level by using drag and drop metrics that you can use to create complex visualizations uh, without having to write any code. Although you, if you know if, if you know SQL, you can do things like add uh, ad hoc columns or metrics via SQL expressions, stuff like that. We've got a wide array of visualization types that you can use to display your data. There's over 40 of them. We're always adding more or updating them. And this is all built around a library agnostic plugin ecosystem. Uh, we've partnered with Apache eCharts for a lot of these, but you can build your own too using basically anything JavaScript. And then of course, dashboards is where this all kind of comes together. And the dashboarding capabilities of Superset include a lot of things uh, you would expect of any first class BI tool, including uh, very versatile filtering, uh, drilling, cross filtering, and uh, you know you can add additional dashboard components like markdown and tabs and other layout features too. And then of course, it does a lot more than just that. Uh, it does a whole bunch of other things like you can templatize your queries. Uh, it's got a lot of tunable caching for a different performance. We'll talk about that too. Um, and, and more, there's also like even a preset CLI. So for instance, you can migrate your assets like charts and dashboards between open source superset and uh, a hosted uh, superset provider like Preset, which allows you to avoid the fear of vendor lock-in that you might be suffering from other proprietary BI tools. And Superset is used by a bunch of companies uh, that are household names. <laughs> of course, this is by no means comprehensive. There are thousands of them using Superset. And if you happen to be a Superset user, I'd encourage you to put your, your name on the website because one of, the, one of the best things you can do for open source software, of course, is telling the world that you use it. And Superset connects to a wide world of databases. Uh, you can connect to basically anything that is SQL speaking. We use SQL Alchemy, so you can create all sorts of different database connectors, uh, whether your data source is petabyte scale or it's uh, just a spreadsheet that you need to connect to that somebody emailed you. And of course, we're here to talk about Trino today, which, as you know, is not a database. It's a special case. Uh, and what's interesting here is that we have a lot of database connectors. So does Trino. So with our powers combined, there's quite a lot we can get into. All right, so let's dive into a quick tour of Superset, and I'll show you around a little bit. First off, I want to show you the database connections view where you can create and manage uh, all of your database connections. In this case, I've got my Trino connection by way of Starburst. And you can configure SSH tunneling if you'd like, or you can dive into some of the advanced features like uh, the things you're allowed to do in SQL Lab, or you can tweak all of your cache settings here and uh, various other bells and whistles. And once you've got your database connected, you can go into SQL Lab and you can really use the SQL IDE to do um, anything you want with SQL. Uh, you can have multiple queries in this window. You can uh, you know, check out the timing of your, of your queries to make sure that things are performant. Um, 
you can download data sets, copy to clipboard, create charts directly from here without creating a data set. But typically, you do want to create a data set with your query results. You can also see your query history, save queries to collaborate th on them, and a lot more. And when you save a data set, they appear over here, which you can see I've uh, merged together a couple of different data sources using Trino. And here I can adjust my various columns, uh, rename them. You can add additional SQL expressions here if you want to add some ad hoc columns and do a lot more. And of course, those data sets in turn are used to build charts. So if you go into a chart like this, whoops, let's go here. This is where you get the drag and drop editor where you can really kind of map your various columns to your various inputs that help create this chart. And you can see the results of the chart in a tabular format. You've also got a lot of visual uh, customizable options here as well that you can get into um, that don't necessarily affect the underlying query. And then all of those charts, of course, roll into dashboards. So here I've got a dashboard I built yesterday, which shows uh, the results of the historical winners of the Great American Beer Festival, something local here that I'm just into and I thought I'd poke around in the data. So I've got a lot of charts uh, that show things on sort of, uh, you know, a time scale layout or various other charts and, and visualizations to show off geospatial stuff using DECGL um, and a lot of other things. Uh, so what we can get into here, uh, you can do things like drilling, for example. It seems that Bach beers are one of the top styles historically. So if you want to go ahead and, uh, you know, drill by brewery and see who are, who's making the best box. It looks like Troges is doing well. You can keep drilling and drilling. You can see what beer is doing well and Troganators doing well in this particular competition. You can even uh, you know look for your metal column and drill that way. So it's kind of non-hierarchical drilling, which is very cool. And let's see, there you go. Gold winner most of the time. I'm going to have to go find some. Uh, then you can do other things like emit cross filters. So if you want to look at uh, California winners of gold medals in this competition, you can click that. And you can see that that emits a filter that goes to all the other charts in the dashboards and narrows your data accordingly. So you can continue to explore all this fun stuff. And then, of course, um, you know, you've got filters over here as well. You can get into time filtering or just filter by state or any other metric you so choose or column. And then, uh, of course, one other thing you can do is you can get into alerts and reports. So if you really want to stay on top of your data, which is very important to most businesses, you can create alerts where certain SQL um, conditions will trigger an alert to be sent by Slack or email or you can create a report as well, which will send a chart or a dashboard on a periodic basis to your inbox. So you can stay on top of everything. Now, that you've seen that, just a whirlwind tour, like I said, I'm gonna go back to the slides. Talk about a couple of Trino advantages that uh, Superset users ought to be aware of. Uh, Query Federation is probably the biggest thing. This is not something that Superset does natively very well. So I'm preaching to the choir here. This is your superpower. But doing joins across data sources in a heterogeneous in data environment is uh, is an amazing advantage and has a million use cases that Superset users ask for all the time. And real-time analytics or near real-time analytics is a strength of Superset. This is what it was built for as a Druid client originally. Um, and a superset offers a bunch of charts that do this very well and offers you, like I mentioned, a bunch of uh, dashboard refresh rates that you can tweak. Uh, you can tweak cache timeouts on a per chart basis. So you can have very up to the minute or up to the hour, up to the second information without blowing up your databases. And then, of course, Trino also offers the advantage of being able to connect to other data sources like NoSQL databases like Mongo 
or uh, other data stores like S3, that superset doesn't connect to natively. So that's another big win. Now, some superset advantages that, uh, that Trino users ought to be aware of is that, of course, we have first-class Trino support. There's documentations on both sides of the fence. Uh, we've got a native connector that's very well tested by large companies, lots of documentation, lots of tutorials, and a lot of support is available. So it's very stable. Uh, and this is a superset is very SQL first. So this aligns well with Trino's SQL centric architecture. Uh, it makes it easy for Trino users to leverage their SQL knowledge and skills and creates a bunch of uh, features that uh, Trino users can take advantage of uh, in their SQL experience, uh, like, you know, that query history, saved queries, autocomplete, all the stuff you'd expect of a first class SQL IDE. And of course, it's open source. Uh, you know, in this community, the advantage of, the, of this, but uh, supersets no different. So you can add features to the core product or help stabilize it, help make releases more expedient. Uh, you can add uh, compatibility with new data sources. You can add integrations with semantic layers and other things. You can add custom visualization plugins or dashboard components. You can add additional configuration to tweak things or styling or whatever else you want to come up with to make it bend to your will. And uh, of course, being open source, the ASF provides security and legal oversight and also just governance of the project in general. And then last but not least, by any means, superset and preset offer you the ability to democratize your data. There's a lot that goes into this, including governance and building culture around data exploration. That's a bigger topic. But one of the key things is affordability, where a superset or preset um, enables you to lower the total cost of ownership of your BI tool. So you can put it in everyone's hand across the org. And uh, this allows all teams and roles to have access to data to answer their business questions faster, and of course, lower the burden on your data team so they're freed up to do other things. And if you want to use Superset in other ways across your teams or with different customers or departments, uh, you might want to run multiple Superset instances. And this is something where Preset might be helpful for you. Uh, it also removes the headaches of managing the software and configuring it and all of that stuff. Since Preset offers uh, not just the latest code, uh, it actually stays closer to the repo than official Apache releases. So you get the bleeding edge version. There's no need to worry about upgrades or migrations or anything. It's secure out of the box, ticks all the cl compliance boxes, and adds additional custom integrations, uh, custom CLI, extra APIs, lots of good stuff. And you don't have to maintain anything, so it saves a lot of time and effort. So I encourage you to try out Superset if you haven't already. You can do so by uh, downloading the official versions from the Apache website. You can build it from source, pull it on GitHub, tweak it, customize it. Or if you just want to try it out as easily and quickly as possible, I encourage you to try it on preset. It's free forever for up to five users. And if your needs expand from there, uh, we can look into paid plans. All right, thanks for your time. Thanks for your consideration. And I look forward to any questions or feedback you might have.